Hello, and welcome to Implementation and Maintenance of Cloud Services. My name is Chris Hessman, and I'm a cloud subject matter expert, and I work in the IT product subcategory, cloud and software division, within the Office of ITC, or Information Technology category, in GSA's Federal Acquisition Service. I work with a team of cloud subject matter experts who assist federal, state, local, tribal, territories, and other eligible organizations within navigating the cloud acquisition process. This presentation is from the viewpoint of a hands-on chief information officer and will mostly revolve around a migration to cloud services, but always from the viewpoint of building out a hybrid environment. My background is one of 25 years of IT experience as a CIO and cloud engineer. This presentation is developed with the point of view of a hands-on CIO implementing cloud services with the flexibility of needed hybrid solutions. One of the things, as with any initiative, is to perform a current state assessment of your environment. This is a large, broad assessment across all of your IT capabilities. Evaluating people, processes, and technologies will help to evaluate your awareness of your ecosystem and informed decision-making later on. Assessing the people, functions, roles, processes, and frameworks, and ensuring they are in line with how your future target is a key part of this process. It is very important to review your enterprise architecture and consider how the new projects and initiatives are going to hurt or harm what is currently working for you. Assessing all of the applications that your organization is running and if they are good candidates for cloud is important to know. You may need a different version of the software that works better in the cloud, or your application may need significant design changes to be cost effective in the cloud. You also need to understand how your IT governance is being done, because there are various aspects of cloud that will require changes in this governance or new roles around how governance is going to work in the hybrid environment that you're creating. It is also always very important to assess workforce capabilities and what they're able to manage going forward within the new cloud operations environment. You will probably need to educate both your in-house IT staff and your regular workforce in the new tools and ways of working. Another important step in transitioning to a cloud environment is a deep stakeholder analysis that establishes the purpose across all areas of this move. For this analysis, you really have to identify the key stakeholders and how they have interest in the current IT infrastructure. It is important to know what influence the department is going to have or maintain as the new environment is created. Customers and vendors need to be brought into this process. You'll also want to make sure that you're breaking down all your stakeholders into their various organizational roles. This will help determine how they're going to be affected by this move. One note on mapping of your stakeholders. You'll have to do this against a purpose-based relative categories within your organization. These categories should either be based on the in, in the interest of the move, i.e. the department or software type that is more important than the other one, or how the department specifically influences the technology that's being used or upgraded to. Part of this should be frank discussions between the stakeholders on the order of the move and why. Sometimes there are reasons that are technical, network infrastructure before an app server move, perhaps. And sometimes they are strategic. An organization wishes to use the upheaval of this major upgrade to switch over to a new application and or server type. And thus, this comes within the order that makes sense for the organization. When everyone is on the same page, buy-in on the strategy should not be an issue. Another very important aspect of cloud transition is how your organization deals with change management. Change management is a key factor in making a cloud migration work because the strategy and the planning are going to be key in making sure everyone's department is on board and understands the undertaking that is happening. Services may be knocked offline or down for periods of time during this move. The way you message and communicate these outages or changes to the greater audience within the organization is going to be shaped by how your organizational change management has been put in place. 
A large aspect of business integration is going to go along with your change management plan, and your agency should demonstrate the value of the change and its successes at each level. This information should be reflected within the change management plan. Process implementation and improvement needs to be at the forefront of what you're communicating through your change management details, stressing the innovations, processes, and frameworks that need to be put in place is going to really help your organization see this through and the project to its end. Organizational design is a large aspect of a cloud migration process. It helps in establishing a governance structure with the correct decision-making processes as they relate to cloud operations and the change man management plan you have in place. As I've said before, the need to assess the skills and expertise of both your IT workforce and your greater staff to grasp their technical understanding of the new environment is paramount. The skills assessment is a prerequisite to addressing any educational gaps. Businesses with the new cloud-based IT infrastructure need to have a true understanding of their staff's capabilities, as the cost of not doing so can be great for both time and financing. Communication and fostering communication between all of the teams that are going to be involved cannot be stated enough. When organizations undergo large-scale transitions such as this, and all the teams are not collaborating or sharing their input and data, something called ah, shadow IT occurs. Shadow IT are processes, software, and their uses, equipment that are unknown, band-aids to get work done that IT either does not know about or has not fixed, and generally exists outside of any formal IT setups or processes. An example from my own career revolved around the printing of manual checks. Most staff at a company I worked for got everything through direct deposit, but there was a process for cutting manual checks that was outside of anyone's grasp or knowledge. When we transitioned over the cloud, physical printers in most departments were gotten rid of. We didn't even know that manual checks were done this way, which is manually in-house. We thought that the bank was cutting them and sending them to the address on file. This is not the case. When we moved into the cloud, this entire process broke. Because we hadn't even considered that aspect of the billing department and their need to cut physical checks to some of our employees, we didn't even consider that it was a process that even existed. This obviously created some problems for our staff. So it's a good reminder that a large-scale transition like this is a great time to address and get rid of shadow IT within an organization. The lack of collaboration between organizational departments, however, can create more. Another aspect of organizational design is going to be, of course, addressing security both maintaining current levels and procedures, and what will be changed or created totally anew in the cloud. How security policies and procedures for your on-prem-based IT infrastructure will change with moving to the cloud-based infrastructure design needs to be mapped out completely and understand, understood by all stakeholders. How it will change and any newly applicable compliance measures will have to be addressed. If an organization has IT integrations with a physical building security infrastructure, for instance, these methods of transition and cloud service types need to be acquired or greatly affected to make sure the security system is not compromised. Quality management practices are also going to be needed to be updated and improved because the defined targets and the performance monitoring that you had within your on-prem or current environment will change greatly in the new cloud environment. And, uh, and as I've said before, Vendor source selection and communication is key. Contract negotiation with vendors and post-transition SLA management are a major part of any transition. The risks with any vendor changeover is often be where project delays and key data gaps happen. This occurs because you're going to generally be moving from one type of service to another. Many vendors or vendor service types that you're buying and using on-prem won't be the same ones that you're going to use when you move to the cloud. 
Always remember, cloud-based infrastructure works differently than your on-premise environment. And having a good process for both vendor selection and the management of those vendors is key to avoiding downtime and cost overages. Moving to cloud is a really good time to look holistically at your IT practices in general. Rehosting applications is really a good way to look at the unused capacity needs that were going on pre-transition. Within a cloud system, you can create a deep analysis of an organization's usage and performance needs, which will help forecast your future needs much more accurately. This information, in turn, will help you greatly with future budgeting. Within the cloud, you're essentially in a timed environment for the most part, and cloud environments have very easy ways to set spending alerts across all your services. Scheduling also factors into this. Having configurable schedule features that automatically start and stop services based on use and need are a major advantage of cloud. Cloud security, as with most network networks, starts and ends with log management, knowing how, when, and what is being logged are the bedrock for a good security program. Good log management is also key, so you're not spending money keeping around and paying for logs that are doing nothing more than taking up dead server space. The cloud's ability to second by second log your total compute if desired can enable an organization over time to hone in there on their exact needs and align them with budget and services that make the most organizational sense. A deep dive into these types of statistics in the early post-transition days will give a truly real sense of an organization's actual needs. This then helps to right-size your environment going forward and have a bankable data on cost estimates. Also, you will want to understand your storage needs against your backup snapshots and the organizational policies that surround them. This will help greatly in keeping your storage costs in check. Institutional policies should be reflected in how you're creating your data and environmental backups. An organization needs to be cognizant of the type of storage that they're using for these backups and for how long they stay in which storage types. Keeping all your data in an active state or going to a more cost-efficient cold storage facilities for long-term backups can give you considerable cost savings. Capacity management is the name of the game post-transition. Keen attention needs to be made to learning all the data collection tools a cloud service provider has for both usage and cost tracking as these pertain to all aspects of your new environment. The first step is develop with all your stakeholders a capacity management plan to put the information gathered by these various data tool sets into practical use. This will ensure that objectives are met on time and under budget. The plan will also help when onboarding new applications, diagnosing incidents, and reporting real data sets based and their plans to upper management. These principles are the keys for a successful cloud transition and are the major factors in what will make this cloud transition work for your organization. Keeping a customer first focus really helps to maintain trust with your customer base throughout the requirements and expectations learning processes. Leadership backing may be the single most important aspect of a cloud transition. Having leadership's back the large levels of upheaval that are needed to create your new and high-performing environment and how the transition plan will unfold is the key to success. Number two, and something that I have repeated often during this presentation, is to always maintain full engagement with all of your stakeholders and address their needs with open and direct communication. This type of project is going to be evolving continuously as the project and environment matures. So this level of engagement must continue on a regular basis once the transition is considered complete because the changes in the cloud space and the new opportunities it brings will not stop. Maintaining a strong process first approach to transition will help you move through pitfalls and avoid cost overruns. 
these types of transitions are very big lift and shifts and the processes that you put in place should be data centered and needs driven if this is done at the very beginning it is what's going to hold everything together at the end once the new environment is in place an organization should seek to take full advantage and utilization of your data resources and of course the opinions from all of your stakeholders these key e areas need to be at the forefront of an evidence-based decision process post-transition. The needs that created the transition to cloud may now not be necessary to accomplish further growth and conserve resources. Database choices on the new service types really lead the way here. These are some of the ideal cloud skill sets that your IT department will need to possess. Site reliability engineering is the main and core aspect of keeping the cloud environment up. These experts that you will need to have on board have a strong foundational knowledge in the automation and software engineering part of a cloud environment. They will need a deep understanding of how the infrastructure as a code and the networking fundamentals go hand in hand. Programming and design skills are necessary for advanced cloud management and developing interlocking applications into services within the cloud. Platform expertise in the various features and services and tools that your agency will need is also a key aspect and you're going to have to keep those experts up to date in their training and always be expanding their skill sets. This continuing education is key because new cloud service types are released all the time. And knowing when an agency should move to a different service to meet their new work needs and load is best to stay on top of cost and efficiency with this education. Your organization will need your team members to have full knowledge and skill sets to integrate all the different services that you have. And furthermore, they'll need to troubleshoot and manage vendor platforms and monitor and troubleshoot incidents that occurred. This leads to an organization that is dedicated to making sure their engineers understand their platform inside and out. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation today. I would like to point you to the tools and services that GSA provides for cloud migration and integrations. GSA offers cloud SME support. This is the group that I'm a part of. My group offers many technical and contract services around cloud acquisitions. One of our most popular services is our no-cost technical scope reviews on both any PWS and RFPs that you may be submitting for bid. We also have a cloud and software community page on our GSA Interact website. Here we post new information about cloud tools and services, as well as any upcoming contract offerings. GSA also offers the Market as a Research Service, or MRAS. This is a no-fee RFI service for project research, market research, and also offers access to online tools to help you connect with vendors from over 20,000 cloud product types. Our Technical Transformation Services, or TTS for short, is a fee-for-service that offers our consultation offers to agencies to help them build any and all digital services they need. We also offer an acquisition assisted service or AAS. This is a fee-based service that enables the complete outsourcing of the large and complex cloud acquisitions that your agency may need. Once again, thank you for listening to my presentation today. If you need any further assistance with your cloud migration or adding cloud services to your environment, please contact us at cloudinfo at gsa.gov. We'd be happy to help you with any of your technical needs. Thanks again.